A lot of you think that Barry Allen is the Flash, and Wally West is just another Flash, or Kid Flash, depending on your exposure to him. But there have actually been multiple Flashes throughout the years. Jay Garrick, Barry Allen, Wally West, and Bart Allen. Whatever happened to Bart Allen? We hear so little about him. He popped up in a couple of the TV shows, and he was rewritten as Bartor in the New 52. So why do we hear so little about this Flash? Now, if you're wondering who he is, he is basically the grandson of Barry Allen from the far, far future where Barry Allen ran to so that he could live a peaceful life. Bart Allen aged rapidly, though, and so he was placed into virtual reality so that he could virtually live a normal life. Eventually, after his parents were killed, his grandma Iris brought him to the current day DC Comics where Wally West used his powers to stop Bart's rapid aging, and then he was set up to learn how to be a speedster from Max Mercury. He became Impulse and he ran with the Young Justice team and then the Teen Titans for a bit until Deathstroke shot him in the knee. When he recovered, he became Kid Flash, and he continued the trend of speedsters becoming Kid Flash. So a little time passed, and Wally West, on his run as the Flash in the comics, came upon an event known as Infinite Crisis. Superboy Prime was on the loose, and he destroyed Connor Kent. It was up to Bart, Wally, and Jay to grab Superboy Prime and run so fast that they literally ran Superboy Prime into the Speed Force. Bart Allen and Wally went in with him, but it turned out that they weren't eradicated and they weren't reborn in the Speed Force, they ran into another reality. Superboy Prime broke free of this reality after they had all lived there for four years. So the Barry Allen who had returned to help gave his suit to Bart Allen and everyone put all of their Speed Force abilities into Bart to send him back to his home reality. Back in the main universe, Jay Garrick had been operating as the Flash this entire time without the use of the Speed Force as he thought that the Speed Force was gone. Luckily, he was a metahuman, so he was still able to run relatively quickly. Bart Allen returned and helped warn everyone about the return of Superboy Prime, but he decided to let everyone think that the Speed Force was gone for good. He didn't want to risk becoming lost to it as Barry had and now Wally, and thus the new legacy of a Flash had begun, except the fan reception really wasn't there for him. The fans wanted Wally. They did not want this darker, edgier, more emo version of The Flash. So, a final storyline was written for him. And this is that storyline. Our tale begins on August 24th, AD 410. The Roman soldiers are murdering all of those in front of them as a man and a woman in cloaks look on. The man asks the woman, Out of curiosity, how did you find me? There's some inside information that I'm working with. The cloak pans on the man's face, allowing us to see his red eyes. The eyes of Hunter Zolomon. The current to Zoom. I have several questions. First, why me? Your involvement will raise fewer temporal issues. Well, if I do this, it's only because I want the opportunity myself. That doesn't bother you? There's the devil that you know factor at work here. Of course. Do you know where I can find him? As we look over the entire city of Rome, burning down, the woman says, Better. I know where he'll be. Back in the current day, Bart Allen, now age 20, due to being in that alternate reality for four years, is on a murder mystery. His search of clues has led him to the home of Leonard Snart, Captain Cold, and he walks into the house. With lightning charging all around him, he tells Snart to plead guilty. It's over. I've tracked you down. Snart gets up, beginning to talk to him, and the Flash zips around him, holding his cold gun. Are you looking for this? And Snart pulls out another one. No, this. I have dozens around here. It doesn't take much for the Flash to knock him down and grab him by the shirt, and then there's a BOOM! Cause Zoom has arrived. The Flash gets up swinging at him. Excuse me, but the Captain and I were in the middle of something. And Zoom puts his hand just at the right spot so the Flash runs into it with his speed, causing blood to begin pouring down his chest, and the carpet is torn up from the skidding Flash as he looks shot. He gets up and Zoom knees him and then rapid punches him. So the Flash gets up again, trying to fight him, telling him, Random attacks aren't your MO, Zoom. What is this? And in Speedster talk, Zoom informs him, I'm doing this for someone else. Then with a crack of Speedster punches, the race through the city begins. But the Flash isn't playing with that racing game again. So he vibrates through the ground and he comes up, hitting Zoom out of nowhere. Flash grabs him and he looks at him. Who sicked you on me? And then Zoom turns to his left, telling the Flash, her. And that's when Bart sees Iris West of the future, his own grandmother. She fires a gun at the Flash, and he speeds up, allowing him to see that she actually fired darts at him. Zoom barrels in behind him as Flash takes the dart out of the air and slams it into Zoom's neck. And then he turns to his grandmother. You better answer some questions. Meanwhile, Leonard Snart is running through the city, and he's stomped by Inertia, Bart Allen's clone, who tells him, Do you want to finally beat the Flash? Iris explains to Bart that she brought Zoom to stomp him, and the Tranks take a speedster's powers away for about a week. Bart asks her what's going on. Why did he need to be removed for a week? 
Meanwhile, Inertia is continuing his plans as he gets the rest of the rogues, and Iris explains the terrible truth. Inertia is going to bring those rogues together, and they are finally going to win. This is all going to end tomorrow. Bart lets that sink in as his grandmother cries on his shoulder. She wanted to stop the Flash for only a week. She wanted her grandson to live. He eventually heads off to class at the police academy, where they tell him to report to the head station. At the station, they put him in handcuffs because they discovered that when Steppenwolf attacked the LAPD academy, he did so to break into Bart Allen's locker. So what isn't he telling the police department? At that moment, another officer breaks in telling the detective that the supervillains are attacking the museum. Bart stands up. I gotta. But the detective tells him he's not going anywhere. So Bart thinks about it for only a second. He knows what he has to do and he vibrates through the cuffs, dropping them, putting on the suit and telling the detective, I am the Flash and I have to go. He runs off to the museum. As he rushes off to the museum, he sees a shield that the trickster put up and he knows why it's there. Because there's only a few speedsters who can vibrate through the ground to go underneath that shield. The Flash knows that he should call the Titans or the League, but it doesn't matter. He already knows the future. Iris told him everything, hoping that it would change. Gritting his teeth, the Flash leaps out of the ground, tearing it up around him, and he vibrates all the way into the room where Inertia is beating up Abracadabra for figuring out his real plan. This isn't to let the rogues win. Inertia has his own agenda. The Flash begins to beat up Inertia. Since Bart is now 20 and Inertia stayed the age of 16, the Flash is able to easily overpower him. Until the wall explodes behind him and there stands all of the rogues. The Flash punches Captain Cold, breaks the Pied Piper's flute, and then the Mirror Master pops out of a shiny earpiece that the Flash has, hitting him, knocking off his earpiece piece and ripping the suit. The Flash runs over grabbing the cold gun and he uses it to counter a blast of fire from Heat Wave. Meanwhile, Iris has brought Bart's ex-girlfriend to the scene to help try and defuse the device that is about to go off. They discover that Inertia's plan is to sap the speed force out of Bart and then put it into himself, but he can't contain the amount of the speed force that is in Bart's body. The resulting explosion of the excess speed force would be the size of 20 nuclear bombs. The Flash keeps running at top speed, punching each of the rogues until it's activated. And then, all of his speed is gone. And at 350 miles per hour, he goes rolling out onto the grass with no way to stop himself. The rogues walk out asking if that was supposed to happen. And then they see the police choppers coming and they realize that Inertia lied to them. He told them all that time would freeze, but it's obvious that this only affected the Flash. They all stand around and Cold says that he isn't going to prison again. The Flash looks up and sees the thing that all speedsters fear. The sight of the Black Flash, the Grim Reaper, the death to the speedsters. And just as the rogues leap into battle the Flash and ensure that there aren't any witnesses, the Flash stands up with the Black Flash staring him down and he sees the rogues coming until a flash grenade goes off and Grandma Iris runs over to block everything. The Flash turns to his grandmother asking what she's doing here and she opens fire on the rogues as they make a break for it. They take cover behind a wall where Iris tells him to run. She'll keep them distracted, but Bart isn't about to let his grandmother sacrifice herself. So he knocks her out, laying her down softly and out of the way. He picks up the gun as his ex-girlfriend calls to him. She explains that there is no reverse button for this machine. They can't just return the speed force to his body. So she's going to send the speed force back to where it belongs. But if she she does that, Bart Allen won't ever get to ride the lightning again. He tells her it's okay. And then he runs out at normal speed, shooting at the rogues, getting them to chase him. He describes it like running with some bent legs, and they give chase until he realizes that Inertia and Pied Piper aren't with them. Luckily, as the rogues catch up, even without speed, Bart has training from the LAPD, from Batman's protege, from a complete knowledge of the human anatomy thanks to the San Francisco Public Library. But the downside is that they have numbers on their side, and they soon use them to overpower him. They spill his blood and they push Bart to his knees. And Pied Piper walks over with Inertia, asking what the rogues are doing. Realizing that Inertia betrayed them, Piper went ahead and beat him, dragging him over. Then with the two of them next to each other, Abracadabra looks at flashes in Inertia's face and he realizes they're the same person. Though the Flash is slightly older, he's still a boy. And he spills the beans. That this was all to take the Flash's speed and give it to Inertia, so that he wouldn't need his little needles. Velocity 9. Heatwave turns to Inertia. This was all for you? This had nothing to do with us? And Inertia argues, Don't be an idiot! This is all you've wanted! The Flash is at your mercy! Abracadabra gestures to Bart. I want to kill the Flash, but that's not the Flash. Bart gives him a cold stare. I am the Flash, he shouts, and he stands up breaking free of Leonard Stark's hold on him. He jumps at Inertia and he begins to beat him down, looking at the Black Flash in the distance, wondering, hoping that the Black Flash is here for the only other speedster on the scene. As he beats down Inertia, he remembers what his grandmother told him the night that she revealed his end to him. She explained that she read the obituary. She read about his death, and she's so sorry. And Bard held her and told her it's okay. It's gonna be okay. Listen, Grandma, if that's the future, then that's the future. It's gonna be what it's gonna be, and I'll be fine. I'm okay with it. 
Inertia kicks the flash off of him. And then they both see it. The device is open. The speed force is there. Right there. Before it can get put out into where it should be. Inertia knows that he can run for it. He can take it. The Flash knows what Val is doing. But Inertia sees it as a chance to get speed. And the rogues both see Inertia and Flash running towards it. And as Flash is trying to stop Inertia. They think that the Flash is trying to get his speed back. And they can't allow that. And they think that that's what's going on. So as Flash tackles Inertia to the ground. The rogues run in right behind him, blasting him with fire, ice, and lightning. And then they proceed to kick him to ensure he's down. While Bart can see his death coming, he sees the giant bolt of speed force lightning going off into the sky. And he knows that Val did it. She freed the speed force. The rogues in inertia fled as Val and Grandma Irish ran over to see Bart. They begged him to heal. Let the speed force come back to him. Heal him. And he told them that the speed force wasn't working. He doesn't know why, but he's not healing. Tears begin to roll down Val's face as Bart reached his hand out to wipe them away. I don't know what it feels like, but I think I'm in love. And that was the death of the Flash. A hero to the end as he prevented the force of 20 nuclear bombs from going off. But this is not the end of our story. Tim Drake got the call in the Titan's Tower and he couldn't even stand up. Jesse Quick cried into Jay's arms. And the vigil was held for the fastest man alive. My name is Bart Allen, and I'm the fastest man alive. End of the day, you only need to know two things about me. I run fast, and I help people. And he comes slow, and he come fast. It is but death who comes at last. Sir Walter Scott, 1808. Yet, our story can't end there. Are we really gonna let the world live without a Flash and the bad guys win again? My name is Wally West. I'm the Flash, the fastest man alive, and I'm still too late. After everything that happened with Bart and Superboy Prime, Wally felt that it was time to find a way to return to the proper dimension and check on Bart, see how he's doing. With a crack, he runs onto the scene with Linda and his two kids in tow. The force of their arrival was so great that the ground was destroyed and lightning courses throughout the sky. Wally looks up to see the Justice League there looking at him surprised, primarily Superman, Power Girl, and Jay Garrick. Superman kneels down welcoming Wally home and informs him that he only left a few weeks ago. These kids were babies. Everyone is happy to see Wally welcoming him back and catching up. But Wally felt something was wrong. The speed force was fading and he wasn't sure why. That's when Batman called in telling Wally to get to the museum. It's bad. Back at the scene of the death of Bart, the rogues all know that they're marked. They kill the superhero and that's like being a cop killer in the superhero world. Plus, they trash the entire museum. They need to flee. And flee they did as Inertia also rocketed off, now having access to the Speed Force powers. But now, now that Wally is back for Inertia, there is no hope. He runs through the streets of Los Angeles, only to literally have a tornado behind him. And THWAM! Wally hits him hard. He grabs Inertia by the suit, holding him up with tears in his eyes. And he looks at the murderer of Bart Allen. He rockets through the landscape, barreling through the fields and barns, taking Inertia far, far away from LA. And that's when Inertia realizes who this is. Wally? I thought you were dead! Wally slams him through a train and he runs over the ocean gaining more and more speed until he soars through Europe and he asks him, How? What happened? Inertia tries to struggle to get it out. Bart's powers! <coughs> His powers went away! You took them! He never got them back because you arrived right then! Wally runs through Russia shouting, No! Powerless! That's how we were able to get him! And then Inertia grins a psychotic grin and he screamed like a little bitch! Nothing but rage burns in Wally's eyes as he gets even faster. He considers how he should handle Inertia. Should he just take his life? He's never been able to justify taking a man's life before, but Inertia isn't a man. He's a kid, a clone of Bart Allen, an irredeemable sociopath with Bart's face. It's the only thing that spares his life. And Wally realizes that he can't kill Inertia, but he can do something so much worse for a speedster. Wally returned to Iris to explain everything and discuss the life of Bart. When she asked what he did to Inertia, he explained that he sapped his speed and everything else. You see, one of Wally's speedster's powers is to draw speed from everything around him. And he took everything from Inertia. He is now immobilized forever. Still conscious. Still thinking. But forever locked into a position where it will take 100 years to blink, staring at the ghost of a man that he could never be. And that was the conclusion to Bart Allen's time as The Flash. Now this story took place a long time ago and Bart Allen did eventually come back with The Flash Rebirth storyline. And he wondered why everyone cared about Barry Allen and not him, but that is a story for another day. As for Inertia, well, he was locked away for a good amount of time until he did eventually get a chance to come back. And he teamed up with the Reverse Flash of the time and became Kid Zoom. But eventually, the rogues caught up with him and they killed that kid. 
They killed him for betraying them, for tricking them into murdering the Flash. And they left a note, one for the Flash at that time, that said, we're even. But that is also a story for another day. Let's have a moment of silence for Bart Allen. I hope you guys enjoyed this Throwback Thursday, and don't forget, if you want to keep up to date on all the old classic Flash storylines, Throwback Thursday storylines, and current storylines with DC Rebirth, subscribe to this channel. And we can chat about whatever you want on Twitter and Instagram, at Comic Story. I'll see you next time right here.